Hello everyone, welcome back to Cine Guela and for our season ender, we'll be bringing you around Europe through learning about Romanesque and Gothic art and learn about their similarities, characteristics and their differences. But definitely this movement in art brought us this marvelous architectural mechanisms and beautiful cathedrals. Well, so our activity would be this. We're gonna make a full glass art um, lamp. Yeah, so I have this little candle, or you can buy an e-candle or electronic tea-like candle, by the way, uh, just to be exact, and place it in the middle, and voila, it will or can illuminate and add beauty in your study room or bedroom. So are you ready to do this? Yeah, so let's go! So now let's begin. In the medieval world, art came to play a major role in society. The first consistent style was called Romanesque, which was at its peak between 1050 and 1200. Romanesque churches used art, largely painting and sculpture, to communicate important things. The Romanesque was at its height between 1075 and 1125 in France, Italy, Britain, and the German lands. Romanesque art was also greatly influenced by Byzantine art, especially in painting and by the anti-classical energy of the decoration of the insular art of the British Isles. From this elements was forged a highly innovative and coherent style. The characteristics of Romanesque art can be seen through the combined features of Roman and Byzantine buildings and other traditions. Romanesque architecture exhibits massive quality, thick walls, round arches, study piers, groin vaults, large towers, and symmetrical plans. In Carolinian and early Romanesque architecture, the window openings, partly for structural reasons, were small and few in number. It was then the pictorial windows of stained glass became a major art form and in Northern Europe, the most important single element in church decoration. And these cathedrals are built during the Romanist period. So now let's discover Gothic style. It refers to the style of European architecture and sculpture which linked medieval Romanesque art with early Renaissance. The period is divided into early Gothic, High Gothic, and International Gothic, primarily a public form of Christian art. It flourished initially in the Ile de France and surrounded region in the period 1150 to 1250, and then spread throughout Northern Europe. Its main form of expression was architecture, exemplified by the great Gothic cathedrals of northern France. Gothic art, being exclusively religious, lent powerful, tangible weight to the growing power of the church in Rome. This not only inspired the public, as well as its secular leaders, but also it firmly established a connection between religion and art which was one of the foundations of the Italian Renaissance among famous medieval artists in the Gothic style were Giovanni Pisano and Simone Martini of the Sienese School of Painting. Why was stained glass important to the Gothic cathedral? Tracery and rose windows. Tracery allowed windows to become larger and more elaborate. Gothic stained glass windows conveyed Bible stories in a colorful visual form at a time when not everyone in the population could read. They were an important means of getting religious ideas across to members of the church. Well, let's define avant-garde first. It is a French term meaning advanced guard or literally for guard. These are people or works that are experimental, radical, or unorthodox, which respect to art, culture, or society. It is frequently characterized by aesthetic innovation and initial unacceptability. Respectively, the gargoyles atop the Gothic cathedrals around Europe are a form of avant-garde architectural mechanism because its spout are designed to convey water from a roof and away from the side of a building. Thereby, it prevents rainwater from running down masonry walls and eroding the mortar between. 
architects often use multiple gargoyles on a building to divide the flow of rainwater off the roof to minimize the potential damage from a rainstorm. A through is cut in the back of the gargoyle and rainwater typically exits through the open mouth. Gargoyles are usually an elongated fantastical animal because the length of the gargoyle determines how far water is directed from the wall. When gothic flying buttresses were used, aqueducts were sometimes cut into the buttress to divert water over the aisle wall. When you take a trip to Europe, you'll inevitably encounter one of the hundreds of gothic cathedrals that dot the landscape. These were built in the 12th through 16th centuries and these medieval masterpieces were born out of the Romanesque movement, which saw churches designed with thick walls, round arches, and large towers. Gothic architecture, again, are focused on height and light, despite being constructed from heavy stones. Of course, they do have their differences too. For Gothic style, they have three main characteristics, which makes it distinct. It's known for its highness, vertical lines, and flying buttresses. And for the Romanesque style, it is solid, heavy, and they have comparatively, you know, small windows, and it's dim lighted. They had a heavy frame structure as well. Gothic style is indeed a progression from the Romanesque style. So, if you're planning a trip to go here in Zurich, so you better take a Stadelhofen and get out of that same station as well. So you can actually take a very good picture of this view. Now we're just going to check out what is it in here in Stadelhofen. So this is Großmünster. It is a beautiful three-tower Protestant church close to Limat in Altstadt. The name means Great Minister. And it is a Romanist-style Protestant church in Zurich, Switzerland. Well, from here it looks familiar because they shot that Korean novella crash landed on you in here. And this is Bahnhofstrasse, that station. Beautiful, right? So now let's get started. So what are we going to do is draw some partition like on the back side of the mounting board or illustration board. I'm going to use the black um, part of it. So that's one inch and then like per partition it would be five and a half. Yep. So that's one inch then five and a half and five and a half. And okay, grab your cutter and let's do uh, cut this partition. Okay, so don't add too much pressure in it so it's not gonna go all the way. And you'll have this very crisp um, partition or crease. Yeah, okay, so now just a little pressure. So you'll be able to achieve this effect like a crisp um, crease. Yeah, just like that. Okay, so do it like on the other mountain board or illustration board. And after that, flip it and let's put some design on the white side of our mountain board or illustration board. Yeah, so I'm just putting like rectangles in there. And make sure that it's 
inch apart okay and I just made sure like whatever design I made like there's an enough uh, portion where I can put the cellophane paper later or the plastic colored paper and for this one if you wish to cut it through you need to add a little bit more pressure like more pressure and don't forget to put a rubber mat like beneath so it would be easier for you to cut but if you don't have that at home you can use like newspapers like make it thick uh, fold it properly and then make sure it's thick enough so it won't scratch your table okay so make two of these I made like a window style it's very easy made a very easy design and the other one is just like a little bit of curl line there yeah like a feminine touch So after that, we can just add our cellophane paper. Yeah, well, I'm just choosing uh, several colors that I have. So these are just, yeah, red, uh, purple, yellow, and all that. So that's what I'm talking about regarding the partition. So make sure that it's thick enough to put your uh, cellophane paper okay and it will give you like the stained glass art um, effect or faux glass art effect to that okay so just going to glue everything together in there and just add more okay this is just like a tip make sure that the cellophane paper or the colored uh, paper that you'll be putting won't overlap yeah So just stick it, you know, nicely in there. Yeah, needs to be a little bit, not a little bit, but needs to be precise. Yeah, so I'm going to do it again. Yeah, because again, we need to make sure it's not going to overlap the yellow color in there, okay? Same goes with everything. Yeah, so now we're almost done. Glued everything in and look at that wow looks like um, a very nice window right okay quite happy with this and let's now it's dry everything's dry what we needed to do is put it all together remember we had this inch uh, partition that's where we're going to put our um, adhesive so let's make sure everything's okay okay so it's what I'm talking about the inch partition and grab your glue gun and glue stick and if you don't have a glue gun at home you can still use the glue stick and use a lighter yep so let's glue it to the side where there's no partition it and make sure that it's all intact okay so let's do it on the other uh, partition and just put it together glue it together yep okay there you have it so the measurement of your partition needs to be exact. That's why I use a ruler, okay, everyone? Yeah. So it would be easier. It will give you like a clean um, look for our lamp. So there you have it. Yeah. Very easy. Look at that. Then you can place the candle in the middle or at E tea like candle so just to be safer yeah so i hope you enjoy our activity and please subscribe to our youtube channel okay see you soon bye